Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is January 1st, 2022, so it's the start of a new year, and I thought it would be the perfect time to clean, tidy, and organize my sewing and craft space, as well as give you guys a general life update in terms of where my sewing and crafting has been at the last couple months. You may have noticed I haven't posted on this channel in a while, largely because I've been in the process of moving. I wrote a big exam this fall and I also started a new job all in the span of a couple months, so I was just crazy busy. So I recently moved to a new apartment and I'm lucky enough that I actually have a little nook that I'm going to set up as a craft and sewing space. It's mostly set up, but I still have a few things to put away. And I was also doing a lot of beading before the holidays as I was making some gifts for people. So I have beads everywhere, fabric strewn about, and I just wanna get organized and jump into some sewing for the new year. So I figured I'd take you along with me as I organize, clean my sewing room, and just give you some general updates about projects that I'm working on and sewing plans for the new year. So if you're interested in a video like that, please keep watching. So let me give you an overview of what the space looks like now because it's pretty bad. Okay, so here is a general overview of the sewing space that I have to work with. So I feel super lucky that my apartment has this nice little nook that um, I wasn't going to be using for anything else. So I've decided to put my crafting space here. So, so over here I have a little set of drawers that I use to organize some of my sewing supplies. However, I've let most of these drawers become really unorganized over time. <laughs> Everything's everywhere. And I'd like to return this to a somewhat organized state. So I'm going to work on that. I have my main machine on the floor here. When I go to use it, I just bring it up and put it on my desk. And when I'm not using it, I just tuck it away here. And I also need to put away some other things like my iron and ironing board on the floor there. So this is my desk space. I do actually use this desk for working from home as well. So um, I'd like to get it cleared off so that I'm ready to work during the week and also cleared off so that I can sew if I like. So right now, like I mentioned, it's absolutely covered in beading and sewing supplies. So like I mentioned, I was making a lot of handmade earrings and things like that for Christmas. And then I just was having a lot of fun playing around with different designs and things like that. And I just got really into it. Let me know if you're interested in the future in seeing more beading content. I used to be really into beading. I've previously sold my work, but I just haven't done it as much recently, but I had a lot of fun getting it out again and beading a bit for the holidays. But I'd like to clear all of this off because it's just an absolute disaster right now. Over here, I have the stool that I used to sew on. Here's my antique Singer sewing machine and its sewing cabinet. And there's just some things strewn about here that I'll organize. Right now, this is kind of a big bin of either unfinished projects or things I'm just not sure I wanna work on. So in the new year, I'm gonna try and be better about not finishing projects that I'm not super interested in working on. If it's not gonna work for me, I'm just gonna donate it and um, move on to things that I actually want to work on. So I'm gonna tackle that as well. Over here, I just have more beading stuff strewn across the floor from when I was in a rush making some Christmas gifts. Have some um, fabric scraps under there as well as another Christmas gift that I still have to give to the person that it's for. This armoire, um, I really just had no other place to put it in my apartment. I'd originally wanted to get it out of here and I was just storing it here temporarily, but I'm sure a lot of you crafters can relate. Um, it's actually coming in handy for storage, so I'm going to put all my beads back in this armoire for now. Lastly, I have this cute little fabric shelf that I got. It was super cheap just from Canadian Tire, and I used the hack of using magazine boards to fold my fabrics, and I really love how it looks. So that's mostly organized, but I do want to get some of the random scraps that are on the floor, fold them nicely, and put them in there. This is the project I'm currently working on. <laughs> Ignore the knives, I use them as fabric weights, but, but if you've seen my Instagram, you know I've been slowly but surely working my way through the Hovia quilted jacket sewing project. I have my two front panels done, my two front pockets, and then I've just drawn my stitching lines for the sleeves. This is the batting I'm using, so 
I'm having a lot of fun working my way through this project and I can't wait for it to be done. But I am in the mood to sew a little quick and easy something for the new year, just to keep me, just to give me some momentum um, working towards finishing this coat. But I'm going to kind of organize all the pattern pieces that I have for this project. So there's some here. Some of these pieces are for the coat as well. And then other pieces for the coat are all just strewn about everywhere. So let's get that organized as well. Okay, here's my scrap situation. So when I'm organizing my fabric, um, when I have really big usable pieces, I'll tend to either fold them on boards like this to display in my fabric display, or else I'll messily fold them like this and they can go into one of my drawers. And these are pieces that are generally big enough to make some sort of substantial project, even if that's a tote bag or a tank top or something, like there's enough of the fabric that I can do something with it. For scraps that are still substantial in size, um, I like to try and fold them and I'm collecting them in this bin right now. So these scraps are something that I could maybe piece together at some point to make, I don't know, like a patchwork dress or something along those lines. Like they're not just tiny little bits of fabric. They're often um, big enough pieces to, to do something with. And for really small scraps like this, little off cuts, I'm trying to save all of my scraps as best I can. So for these, So for these types of scraps, I've been cutting them up into small pieces and putting them in this bag. I also have a second bag like this. Um, I got a bit lazy before the holidays and didn't cut up all my scraps. So I'm gonna do that right now actually. But that's where I would put these small pieces like this where I don't want it to go into the trash, but I really can't think of anything that I could personally make with this other than to cut it up. And my plan for this is that I would like to stuff either some stuffed animals or maybe a couch cushion or something like that. I'm also putting off cuts of my batting from my Hovia jacket project as well. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut these up now. Okay guys, so I'm done organizing my sewing room. Sorry for the bad lighting. It's a super gloomy day outside as you can see. But starting over here, I finished organizing my drawers. They're not exactly perfect, but I feel like everything has a place now. And so I'm really happy that these drawers are looking more straightened out. So I've got some thread. I've got a lot of my sewing tools in this first drawer here that I use most often. Um, and then a lot of these other drawers contain patterns. So I have a lot of sewing patterns here, a mix of vintage as well as modern indie and big four patterns as well. Lots of them I've never tried before. Um, so I'm super excited to you know, dive into this collection this year and use some of the patterns. 
And I do also have some muslin fabrics that I store in this set of drawers as well. So over here, I've just cleaned off my table of all of the beading supplies. And I also decided it would be a good time to clean and oil my Kenmore machine. So I did take the top and bottom off and spend a lot of time dusting it out, oiling and cleaning it. And it feels really smooth when I crank the wheel. So I think it's ready for a lot more sewing this year. So I was glad I got that done. Over here, I have my vintage Singer sewing machine. It didn't need to be oiled or cleaned out today because I did it really recently, but I did just dust it off and organize um, all of the things that were on top of this table. So now it's all ready to go. Over here, I've put all of my beads and sewing supplies in my chest of drawers and organized it. And then of course, I've finally, I've finished folding my extra fabric and I've put it into my shelves here, which is great. And I've also collected these scraps from my sewing projects and organized that as well. So all in all, it's looking pretty organized and I'm ready to start sewing. So I hope you enjoyed seeing me tidy and organize my sewing and crafting space. I feel like I could just breathe so much easier that now that everything is put away and organized and I feel like I finally have the room to start working on a project. So in terms of my sewing plans for 2022, I do have a few small goals that I wanted to share with you. So my first goal for 2022 is to focus on using fabrics that are in my stash. Um, when I was just getting into sewing over the past couple years, I found myself having so many ideas of things that I wanted to sew and then just buying the fabric and patterns for those projects immediately. And I was sewing really frequently towards the beginning of the pandemic. Um, it was winter here, we were in a full lockdown and I was just sewing like at least one thing every week. But since things have lifted a bit and since I've been busy with a new job and moving and things like that, I'm really not sewing as much as I was before. So I do have a good collection of fabric now and I do feel like I have different types of fabric. So if I want to make like a bias cut dress, I might have some rayon crepe in my collection or if I want to work on a pair of jeans, I have some denim. Or if I wanna make a simple dress, I have some nice lightweight cotton or linen. Whereas when I started sewing, I didn't have those fabrics in my collection, so I found myself buying a lot of fabric. So I'm all set up with fabric and I'm all set up with patterns as well. So I'm gonna focus this year on using what I have. The second thing that I wanna focus on this year is continuing to save my scraps and um, try to be as zero waste or as low waste with my sewing as I can. So I showed you during the tidying clips how I've been saving my scraps. So I have a lot of ideas of how to use these scraps and I want to get into that this year. So for some of the bigger scraps, I really want to do some patchwork tanks and patchwork dresses for the summer. I've seen some super cool ones around, so I want to start using up those scraps now. I feel like I've collected enough of them that I can actually start using them to make something. And in terms of the smaller scraps, I really want to make either a cushion or something that I can stuff like a stuffed animal and start stuffing um, a project with all those scraps and use those up as well. So I do have a couple of learning goals for the year. So this year, I really want to learn a few new sewing techniques. So last year, I feel like I was still working on a lot of the basics with sewing. Um, and I learned the skill of quilting. I am working on my quilted jacket, so that's been really fun to learn that new skill. So for this year, I really want to learn how to work with denim and learn how to make jeans. So I have a couple of jeans patterns in mind and I bought myself some 12 ounce bull denim. I want to learn how to do different jean finishes like putting in a zipper, um, pockets and all of that, as well as learning more about fitting jeans. So that should be a really fun journey for me this year and that's something that I want to learn. This year I plan to continue to do a lot of my sewing on my Vintage Singer sewing machine. Um, ever since I bought it, it's been my go-to machine. It only does a straight stitch, but I find it's doing basically everything I need. If I need to finish a seam, I'll just get out my Kenmore and I'll use like a zigzag stitch or something like that to finish the seams. I don't have a serger right now, but I've just been enjoying this vintage machine so much and I've really been enjoying learning about vintage machines. So 
I'm going to continue to learn about this machine and use it a lot this coming year in my sewing. So thanks so much for following along with me today as I cleaned and tidied my room. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm super excited for all of the sewing projects to come in 2022. Um, if you like this type of video and you like sewing content, please do follow along. I would love to have you here. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.